these books are out April 14th. Um, they are distributed by Penguin Random House, but I believe these books are all from Canada Press. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, the first is a Macy book by Lucy Cousins, one of our favorite series. I feel like my husband discovered it when I was pregnant with our oldest, and we were a huge fan and read everything, every, literally every single book. Um, and this one is an interactive book. It has letters, presents, and surprises. So, let's see. I think, yeah, so you have sort of these kind of elements where you can take stuff out. Um, yeah, just Maisie books are kind of, for us, like, just iconic. Like, it's just about um, friendship and being kind. Um, the animals don't really talk with words, so it's like you just observe what they do. It's just like a lot of love, and each character has its own distinct personality. Yeah, one of our favorites. That looks great, and I like how I like how there's um, stuff you can take out. Um, it's interactive, even though you know you can also lose them. But I guess you just have to be careful. So the next one is Baby Clown by Cara LaRue, LaRue um, illustrated by Matthew Cordell. Um, and it looks like Baby Clown is, I don't know, either unhappy or this is part of the act. And so it looks like when two clowns have a baby, um, it's difficult to try to carry on working. And there's a baby to take care of, so that's definitely, so it's definitely fun. Like the, the illustrations remind me of, um, what was it, the one who does the Roald doll? Was that Quentin? I forget his name. But they, you know, they're very whimsical and there's like kind of humor built in. There's the way he does the eyeballs. It just looks funny already. And so, yeah, it's a story about parenting, the challenges of parenting, and maybe more so this message that we're all in isolation from social distancing, now spending plenty of quality time with our children, but a reminder of what they were like when they were really little. And it looks like, um, it looks like Baby Clown has the same comedic talents as his parents. So that looks great. I think Carol wrote. I feel like she's a uh, a local author in Providence. Is that right? Yeah, she lives in Providence. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of the infamous Ratzos. I think that's hilarious. Um, and I believe she works also for Hasbro as a copywriter. Oh, I've been waiting to read this book, Box. So. Um, there's a book called Henry's Freedom Box, um, and I think it's about the same person, Henry Brown, who mails himself to freedom. But it, like, it sounds like, oh, it's so easy. Why don't you just put yourself in a box and mail, mail yourself to freedom? But it actually um, was difficult and dangerous. And Carol Boston Weatherford is one of my favorite authors um, of all time. Like She does a lot of important work. Um, I think all her, her books, like, I feel like if you read all her books, um, it covers, you know, most of the important, um, like you could cover Black History Month by reading only her books. Um, and it's illustrated by Michelle Wood. And so I think she's giving us another perspective of Henry's Freedom Box, which I feel like is a really popular book. Um, I know that, um, my kids read it when they did an enslavement unit in fourth grade in their elementary school. And so, so this is more Henry's story from him as an kind of an autobiography, or this is actually, he could write, so that's his actual words. Um, but it is told in the first person with a lot more detail about what his life was like than Henry's Freedom Box is almost like a sanitized version of it, although it does go into how he had to brutally self-wound himself in order to um, have a cover story for why he wasn't there so he could mail himself. So
So I think the illustrations almost remind me of folk art and really pair beautifully um, with his story. And it's just a much more in-depth, uh, probably perfect to pair together. Henry's Freedom Box maybe is for a younger audience. And so kids who are familiar with that book might go on to read this book a couple years later when they're um, a little bit older and, and um, the reading skills are a little bit um, more advanced for this, you know, to be able to read this much text. But it's a really beautiful book, an important story. Um, and it's told in stanzas, so it's also poetry. So it can also be used for um, April's National Poetry Month. Okay, the last one is called Incredible Jobs You've Probably Never Heard Of by Natalie Labar. Um, and she has lucky numbers here from her fortune cookie. So that must be an interesting job, perhaps, listed. Someone who makes fortune cookies. Um, and it's a very tall book. This is like, it's like a, here's my hand. It is like a rectangle. It's just ex extremely, like a normal book would end here. Um, and it just keeps going. So that kind of makes it fun in and of itself, just like a different shape. Although for shelving, like if you have it at a library, it probably has to be in oversized books or they shelve it in a weird way or you can't see the spine. So I don't know how your library handles that, but we have an oversized section. But sometimes it's hard to find the book because you're looking for it alphabetically by the author or the, maybe this is nonfiction. Um, but you're looking for the book and it's not there because it's in a special section for oversized books and you forget to look there or you don't even know where it is. Yeah, so this is definitely nonfiction about jobs. Um, and I come out of staffing. So personally, I find people's jobs fascinating. But it is an interest that no one else in my family shares or understands. Oh, but this is an interesting job. A crossword puzzle writer along with a fortune cookie writer. So like if you're a writer, here are things that you can write besides books or newspaper articles or blog posts. Oh, a nail polish namer. And that also reminds me of the people who name like paint chips. Like I always think of this. So this looks really fun. And also I, I feel like the, like what, why this book is important is because kids, sometimes they get like, they pick a career based on what they know and they don't know that many different types of jobs. And so someone might, you know, it's like the obvious ones, community helpers or, um, you know, what they know their parents or their friends, parents do. And so I, I feel like this, just by, just by saying like, Hey, look at all these cool, interesting jobs that no one's ever heard of. It almost like opens the door for kids to have, um, I don't know, more, like more ideas of what they could be when they grow up, especially because the economy of the future of like what our children will grow up into, um, a lot of the jobs, especially some of the really, you know, lucrative jobs, um, they don't even exist yet. And so I feel like it, it can be a real, um, I don't know, limitation to have kids think or be influenced by career choices of things they know about or their parents know about or their grandparents know about. Um, and they sort of, you know, miss out on interesting and great careers. So I think this, like how I would use this book is like, oh my God, isn't this so fun and funny and look at all these interesting jobs. But I think it plants the seed of like, um, you could be anything you want to be. And also, you know, you can in invent a career. Like, you know, who knew there was a funeral clown, you know, or a dinosaur duster. So just kids who have a lot of interests can feel like, you know, maybe there's a way to combine two or three things that I'm interested in that don't make any sense for a career that I can think of. Um, because, you know, look at all these. All right. Thank you so much again for everyone who's watching and for Penguin Random House who sent me these books that are all out April 14th. And to Candlewick Press, Nosy Crow is an imprint. 
Um, and there was another Candlewick imprint. What was this? Oh, uh, for sending me these books. They're really lovely. 